English by the Nature Method, Chapter Fifty Eight, the Fifty Eighth Chapter. The cat is let out of the bag. Look here, Storm," Mr. Edwards said one afternoon, as they were sitting in Mr. Edwards' study, up to their eyes in letters, bills, and all sorts of papers. We shall have to find out why the goods that come to us via Portsmouth have been so late in reaching us the last few times. We can't have all these delays twice. There has been a delay of five days. Please go to the telephone in the hall and ring up Marshall. Ask him to send a wire to Portsmouth. I demand to know the reason for those delays at once. Tell Marshall that we want a reply by wire today, so that he may be able to send the necessary cables. To the continent. If they don't know anything about it at Portsmouth, I want to get to the bottom of this question now. And it takes too long to send letters. So, as I said, I want Marshall to send a wire to Portsmouth, and if necessary, to cable to the continent. When Storm had rung up Marshall and given him the message from the manager, Marshall replied, "I know a fellow at the customs office in Portsmouth. I think I'll send a personal wire to him and ask him to help us to find the error." For it seems clear to me that it must be somebody down there who is making an error of some kind or other. Yes, do that," Storm said, "and then ring me up as soon as you have learned something about it." As he returned from the telephone in the hall, he met Marian just leaving her father's room. "Hello," he greeted her with a, with a smile. "You certainly have courage to go into your father." When he's so busy, it must have been something pretty important you had to tell him. She didn't answer him, but hurried away. He shook his head, a little in surprise at her behaviour, but entered the room without trying to stop her. Here he found Mr. Edwards standing at the window in deep thought, not looking busy at all. When he heard Storm, he turned round with a little smile and said, "Well, my boy, Marion has just told me about you too." And although young women no longer have to ask their father's permission to marry, I am happy to be able to say that I should gladly have given Marian my permission to marry you, had she asked me. This is a surprise to me. I wonder what my wife is going to say about it. Where have we had our eyes? But of course, modern girls aren't kept under observation in the same way as their mothers were when I was young. Why, you must have been seeing each other quite a lot to find time for coming to such an important decision. Not nearly enough, Mister Edwards," Storm replied. "You see, there were always so many people about to prevent me from telling her all the things I had to say, and when it did look as if I was going to have a chance, she always seemed to be able to find something to prevent me from talking about it just then. But I can play at that game too," Storm continued. With a little laugh, thinking of their trip to Leith Hill, I caught her in a place the other day where she couldn't get away, and for once there were no unwanted persons about. So I just kept her there till she accepted me. Hmm. Well, Mr. Edwards replied, I have made the observation several times myself that one must use a strong hand with women now and then. It was the same with her mother when we. He suddenly interrupted himself. Here and continued in another voice. Well, shall we go to the sitting room and break the news to my wife? They found Mrs. Edwards in the garden with Marian. Now, what do you think of that? Mr. Edwards asked. Do you think we can grant these two children our permission to marry? I think it's wonderful, and that he's a very nice boy for our Marian. May God bless you, children. I hope you will be very happy. Thank you, mother. We shall. Marion answered, with a little smile at Storm's red face. But you don't look very surprised," Mister Edwards said to his wife. "Oh no, I have been expecting this for some time, haven't you?" He replied by shaking his head. "Why, with your wonderful brain, I thought you had found out long ago." "This is the brain. I may have got a good." Brain, as you say, and be able to use it in my work. But I will never be so wise about life as you are, my dear," Mister Edwards answered. "Your mother is a very wise woman, Marian," he continued. "You can't teach her very much about life." "Yes, I do hope Marian will grow up to be like you," Storm said seriously, but with laughing eyes. "Grow up," 
Marion cried. Now, children, please, laughed Mrs. Edwards. Life may be pretty rough, you know, so don't make it rougher still by fighting already. And we have so many things to talk about now, too. Let's go inside. Yes, tell us about your plans, Mr. Edwards said. I'm afraid our plans for the future haven't taken any definite shape yet, Storm answered. We want to marry as soon as possible, of course, but it looks to me as if that's a long way off. As far as I can see, we must place all our hope of marrying soon in what I'm able to do with my brain. So you can understand what a very small hope it is, father, I was rapping and laughing. Storm paid no attention to her words, but it was with rather red ears he continued. What I mean is, I haven't been blessed with any rich old aunts who will leave me all the money when they die. So what will need, what will need I shall have to earn by my own work? However, I think that the experience I have been able to gain over here will help me when I return home. Return home? Mrs. Edwards cried. But that's entirely out of the question, isn't it? She asked and turned to her husband. I'm afraid it's impossible for me to stay much longer, Storm said. It makes me very sad, too, to think of leaving England. But now I shall have to get rich quick, as they say in America, and my chance of getting better paid work would be greater at home. And an entirely different thing is that my passport says that I can only stay three months longer in England. Only three months? Mrs. Edwards asked sadly. Oh, isn't there anything you can do about it? Don't you know anybody in the police department that deals with unwanted foreigners? Mr. Edwards replied with a little smile at the expression his wife used. As a matter of fact, I do know a man there, Jenkins. The chief of that department is a personal friend of mine. But I can't very well go up there and demand that they should make an exception to the rules as a personal favour to me, just because we would like a, cer a certain young man to stay. But there is nothing to prevent me, he continued a little more hopefully, from sending a personal message to Jenkins, recommending Storm's case to his kind attention. Now listen, he went on, turning to Storm. You go in and write a letter to the chief of police saying that you are doing special and very necessary work here, which can't be finished within the three months that you're allowed to stay, and ask him for an extra year's stay. There is more than sufficient work for you in our firm, so I'll see that you get chances enough to prove whether you can take on more responsibility. If they grant you the, that extra year, and you make good in your work, you will get a raise, so that you can marry within the coming year. And then, next time you ask for permission to extend your stay in England, you'll have the very good reason to give that you're married to an Englishwoman. So run along now and get that letter done while I write to Jenkins. Isn't it wonderful the way father can always find a way out of difficulties? Marion asked to her mother. Yes, dear, there is certainly nothing wrong with his, with his brain, Mrs. Edwards answered proudly. An hour, an hour later, when the two letters had been sent off, Marshall arrived. I thought it best to come out and explain the matter personally, he said. What matter? Mr. Edwards asked. Why, about the delays at Portsmouth, sir? Marshall replied in some surprise. Oh, yes, that's right. I'd forgotten all about that. You see, he explained, noticing Marshall's expression. We have just learned that Marion is going to marry your friend Storm, so we have been far away in making plans for the future. What's that, old man? Marshall said to Storm. Didn't you tell me the other day to guard that piece of news? Like the crown jewels? I did, Storm answered, but Marion let the cat out of the bag this afternoon. Aren't you afraid to send your daughter off with a foreigner? Marshall asked Mrs. Edwards. We hope they will be able to stay in England, she answered, so that we can keep an eye on them and guard her against all the strange ideas that he will no doubt try to put into her head. Well, said the manager, what do you find out about Portsmouth? It doesn't look as if anybody is making any errors down there, Marshall replied. All goods are sent on very soon after reaching the town. Well, did you cable to our connections on the continent then? You can't have received any cables yet from over there. No, I didn't cable. You see, I found out that the last two or three times the goods have arrived in time. So I got some of these papers that deal only with ships. You know, the sailing plans of all ships, news about the weather, and so on. 
and it seems that, by a strange chance, four of the ships bound for Portsmouth, with our goods on board, have had several days' delay on account of bad weather and a rough sea. The fellow down there, who had dealt with our things, was very helpful. It was he who suggested that I should try those papers. Good, the manager said. I think it was wise of you to hunt about a bit before sending cables all over the country. Marshall and Storm stayed with Edward's family for dinner. And naturally, the conversation turned to the subject of ships. I visited Portsmouth several times, Marshall said, and I think it would be hard to find another harbour with so many types of ships in one place. The entire harbour is full of all kinds of ships, you know. Mr. Edwards explained to Storm, Portsmouth is one of the most important bases for British warships. In fact, it has been so ever since Roman times, where the shape of the south coast makes a fine natural harbour there, here. Within this natural harbour, two harbours have been built, one for warships and one for other ships. And outside the harbour, Marshall added, is the place for all the small boats owned by the people who stay there in the summer. I have been there on a summer day, and it really was a wonderful sight. Great battleships and small, all painted grey, aircraft carriers, where they have broad wide decks for aeroplanes, or aircraft to land on, black steamers, aeroplanes starting from and landing on the aircraft carriers, and moving in and out among all these. There were many small boats with their white sails bright in the sun. We saw a great white steamer far out at sea, too. Somebody said it was the Queen Mary. It's strange to think that they can now build ships large enough to accommodate several thousand passengers and sailors. That's enough people to fill a small town, Storm said. But of course, that's unusual. The boat I came over in accommodated 300. One of the sailors told me what a crowd there must be to see all those passengers off. He added, thinking of all the people who had been there last year to see their friends of when he left the continent. After dinner, they passed a pleasant hour in front of the fire. As it had grown a bit cool in the evening, when they rose to leave, Marion decided to walk with them to the bus. Wait a moment, she called to them from the stairs, while they were saying goodbye to Mr. and Mrs. Edwards. I just want to get my coat and a cap. This is a cap. What, a new hat again? cried her father, as she appeared again with a bright green cap. It's not a hat, Daddy, it's a cap, and I made it myself, so it hasn't even cost you a shilling. Be careful now, my boy, Mr. Edwards said to Storm with a smile. You see, she's trying to give you the impression that she is a great little woman for saving money. But don't trust her. Keep her under your thumb right from the beginning. It's the only way to make good wives of them. Is it? asked Mrs. Edwards. Perhaps I should tell Marion how I made a good husband of you. It's very kind of you to call me that. Her husband answered with a laugh. But perhaps you had better not. It might make him afraid. At last, all said good night again, and the three young people left the house. 